It's so nice to be here. So as Vinnie said, I have come all the way from Christchurch, New Zealand, and that's because I believe that this issue is that important. So this is my second time here and first time presenting, so be nice, let's have some fun together. I'm sure it'll be good. So what I want to focus on, you'll see up there, for me, throughout my own progress and recovery, self-care was essential. When I learnt to do that, my recovery amplified. So whatever your background is, I've talked to some of you, some of you are coming from an educational background, some of you are coming from you are struggling with this issue yourself, some of you are partners, your couples, so whatever your background, you should be able to take something away from this with you today. So obviously our lens is dealing with the harmful impact of pornography use. So keep that in mind, whatever your purpose is for being here with me today is. So my details are there for you as well. So I'm more than happy for you to email me. I can send you the PowerPoint. I can also liaise with you. As Vinnie said, I do, do do some work in this space. So if you want to hear more and know more, I'm more than happy to do that for you as well. So let's do this. I like to set the purpose, so in the next 50, 55 minutes or so, what we're going to do is focus on our mental health. We're going to look at well-being and self-care. What I also want to do is this is an opportunity for you to reflect, to share. So be prepared to talk to other people in the group. My sessions are quite interactive, so you're going to say hi to your neighbours and you're going to talk to one another. Self-care, in terms of connection, is really, really important, and so I'm going to hopefully allow you to do that. So one of the first things I did today was I walked around and talked to many of you, because social connection is essential for self-care. Uh, what else are we doing? We're also looking at coping strategies, uh, no matter what background you're coming from. We're going to spend some time looking at strategies that help enhance mental health despite the challenge of online pornography use. And lastly, I'm going to set you up really well. I've given you a wonderful handout that you can add to. And we're going to look at utilising and looking at what else can you add for your skill set in terms of a good self-care toolbox. We need to be able to access that self-care toolbox, particularly when we're struggling or adversity is occurring. Some of you are in the helping profession, so you're actually helping people that experience this issue. And so you also need to look at your self-care. So even you will need to take care in terms of what do you do to make sure you can support those that are struggling. So that's what we're looking at. As part of what we're doing, just a couple of things, your health and safety is really important to me. So when I ask you to share things, just share what's comfortable for you. And if you need to, do feel free to step out if you need a breather. So health and safety in terms of our session, because we are talking about mental health, things may come up for you, and if they do, look after yourself. Hey, it's self-care, so we've got to do that. Before we do that, so as I said earlier, I am from Christchurch, New Zealand. Does anybody who knows a bit about New Zealand knows about our native? What are they called? Maori. Ah, fantastic. So the Maori are our local native. So we have an obligation to a treaty that we have signed with the British colony. And so it's really important that we like to set the scene, whether it's a meeting, whether it's a special occasion, with at least some form of cultural element. So what I've got there for you today is a beautiful Māori proverb that I really like. I'm going to share it with you. Then I'm going to set the scene for our time together. So it goes like this. E hara taku toa. He takitahi. He toa takitini. My success should not be bestowed onto me alone, as it was not individual success, but success of a collective. So what I've done is I have translated the meaning to fit today's session. So what I mean today, that this is about us remembering that our success ourselves is not just from one person or ourselves. It is collective of all the people that you connect with that support you. And in my case, for me, and you, it may be the case for many of you, it's your parents, your family. So for me, I've got a mother who's been fantastic through my recovery journey. I survived an 11-year marriage, and I did have a husband who had some successes. He also is part of that collective journey of I'm standing here in front of you because of him as well. I want to really make a special acknowledgement to a group of people that are very important for why I'm here today. So the first person is a wonderful man who introduced me, Safe House Counselling. That was the place I went to to ask for help online. Why I'm standing here before you is because of the work I got to do with him. 
as a result of that, my session today has been inspired by a spouse online group that Vinnie mentioned, and some of the ladies are in my group here today. I won't make you stand up, they're probably a little shy. So I'm so excited to have some of them in the audience with me. They've made the effort. One's come all the way from Texas, is it coming? So all the way from Texas to be here. So that's pretty special. And I'm so privileged to be able to spend my time once a week with them as they navigate the space of recovery and they work hard to move forward. So I'm inspired by you and I dedicate this to you. <laughs> Get emotional. <coughs> Okay, so we're going to have a bit of fun. I'm going to break the ice with you. You're going to get some time to have a go at using a little bit of Māori language. So some of you I know have come here by yourself. Some of you are together. Now, one of the things with self-care is to keep learning. We need to make sure that we navigate our cognitive brain to be challenged by new things. It is a really good preventer and it can help when we're struggling with Behaviours we're not necessarily wanting. And so I'm going to allow you to do that today. Don't panic. You don't have to get this perfect. I'm not going to test you. Recovery isn't about perfection. It's about practice. So that's what we'll be doing. So let me do it with you first. So I'm going to say it and I'm going to explain how it works. So on the top there is my name is Raisha. It goes like this. Ko Raisha toku ingoa. Then the second line is saying, where am I from? And I ask some of you where you're from, because in the Māori culture, your place of origin is really important. So it goes like this, nō o tautahi aho. So o tautahi is the Māori word for Christchurch, where I'm originally from. And I was actually born there, New Zealand-born Indian, which is why I look like this. Uh, so what I want you to do is introduce, your introduce yourself to the person beside you. But the other thing I want you to do is part of our session in terms of self-care is about mental health. So I want you to think about your mental health, the people you work with in terms of mental health. What are your thoughts around this idea of mental health and how it navigates in the space of unwanted sexual behaviours? All right, so don't be shy. If you're with, if you're with your partner, try and say hi to some other people. So I want you to connect with different people. I'll give you a few minutes to have a go. All right, off you go. All right, team, I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to wrap up your conversation. Oh, what a very... Good audience, you pretty much stopped on 10 seconds, fantastic. <laughs> so what I did is I had a wee walk around because I wanted to hear some of your ideas and what a wonderful experience. Straight away, I could sense a different vibe in the room. Hopefully your self-care is feeling a bit, a bit better already because you've made some connections. You've actually talked to some people, asked them their names, you now know where they're from and you've got a bit of a sense of their understanding of mental health. I went over here and I had a wonderful man who talked about the importance of physical health and how that's important to mental health. I heard a really nice idea from someone else just behind in that area who was saying how they really believe that self-care and mental health combined must work together to support, particularly with this issue. And I missed the last bit, but they look like they're doing really well. I had a wonderful conversation over here of a connection with a friend that has someone in New Zealand that's from that's from there, and they've got children of the Tongan. But those conversations, those connections, all help enhance mental health. So I hope you enjoyed that and you found it useful. Did you have fun with the Māori language? Bit tricky, bit fun? All right, awesome. So now you should be a little bit more relaxed so we can do the next bit. So what I'm going to do for the next few slides is just share some of the knowledge. So I do like to work from giving you theoretical knowledge, a little bit of strategy work, and some skills, which are really important. So in terms of defining mental health, I'll just pull out some key words for you because you can read this. So to me, when we're thinking about mental health, one of the main words you'll see that comes up first is skills. Now, it is actually needed. You do need to learn skills to manage your mental health. Believe it or not, you can learn how to be resilient by finding strategies that work for you and that does include self-care. So other things that you need to think about is particularly when we're managing change and in the environment you're here for, we are managing change often. So that's why it's critical. It's also about communication, the thoughts in our heads and what they do, how it makes us feel, 
And we do have in our minds positive and negative thoughts that come through and they affect our mental health. And I will come back to that later. Balance. So balancing our mental health is always important. We can't be perfect in every space, but we do need to work on being well balanced to help us function to our best capacity despite the adversity we may face. Down in the second one, you'll see I've highlighted a part in yellow. And this really emphasises the challenge of online unwanted sexual behaviours. So modifying the environment for relationships that cause stress. So I'm pretty confident many of you need to think about that as part of your day-to-day -day lives. is isn't easy. It can affect your mental health, but you're working on it. And you're here, which is great. So it's also about, and these things are really important, emotional and spiritual. Resilience. If we can manage those things and continue to do self-care regularly, then we're more able to enjoy our lives. And actually, when challenges come along, like disappointment, like pain or sadness, if we're continuing our self-care and, and we're actioning our toolkit, when these things happen, yes, they're difficult, but we can manage a little bit better than if we didn't. So overall, what we're looking at is positive sense of well-being. And so today our focus is looking at how do we lift our self-worth. I was in the trauma session across the way here, and the person said, how do you look in the mirror? And if you can say to yourself, do you know what? I'm happy, I'm confident, I actually love who I am, then you're doing really well with your mental health and you can move forward. Not easy to do because you've got to change these thoughts. So this diagram here is just to emphasise that when we're thinking about our mental health, we actually have that with us all the time. It's part of us. So it aligns with our thoughts and feelings. What we need to remember, that resiliency combines with mental health. So that's more what we do when we're faced with adversity or stress. And what we need to be thinking about is how do we cope when challenges occur? And if we are able to make sure that we are resilient, we can develop positive ways of managing our mental health. And that's what we're looking at. The two things align together. But resiliency is tools that we use. So, so for those of you that are educationalists, you can teach your young people how to be resilient. Strategies and skills to do that. If you want to know, come and see me. I'll tell you. I'm going to give you some ideas too. So we're about to do another activity. So I'm just going to get you prepared. Be ready to talk to some people. So this is an activity that I really love. I'm going to set the scene. Some of you may know, if you've heard about or you've been to Christchurch, we had an earthquake, 2011. So post-traumatic stress was significant. What happened in Christchurch is we have an organisation called the Mental Health Foundation. They noticed that people's wellbeing was struggling. And so what they did, they introduced a health promotional campaign and this is what it is, it's called the Winning Ways to Wellbeing. It is based on UK evidence research. So if you do these five things regularly, you will be flourishing day to day throughout your life. And they seem common sense when we hear them. And yet, when we are struggling, we may not always continue to do them. So today's a chance for you to celebrate the opportunities you have that you already do that you can continue to enhance and to remind you to keep doing them. So I'm going to fly through some examples that will you, give you a chance to get to know me a little bit as well. So connect. Connection is essential. I have been connecting so much here. I went to Utah Valley University and did a workshop, offered Ended up meeting some colleagues and staff and made connections, huge. Give, so I spent this week working for Fortify, running online, sp online groups for those that struggle with this issue. And I was able to give my time and support them. Gave them some understanding about the spouse experience. Taking notice, so some of you, I know this gentleman here drove all the way from Arizona. And I'm curious, I wonder if he knew how many traffic lights he went through and how often, or what he noticed as he drove through to get here. So taking notice, sometimes we don't even remember how we got to work. So that's about slowing things down, remembering the simple things in life. Gratitude, essential for recovery and self-care. So that's what that one's about. Keep learning. I threw you into the deep end today, and I said, here you go, here's some Māori language, have a go. It's a simple example of learning all the time. I've, as Vinnie mentioned, I'm doing my masters and continuing to learn, really important. And being active. I'm a Zumba person. I quite like going to the gym. Is there anyone else that enjoys a bit of dancing? 
Oh, yes, most of the ladies in the room. Come on, fellas, it's good for your coordination. <laughs> So being active is really, really important as well. So what I'm going to ask you to do is you can talk to the same people. If you want to share with others, do that too. I want you to tell the people around you, what are you currently doing in this space? Maybe you did it today. Maybe you did it yesterday. What's going well for you? And share some examples. Go for it. Right team, I'll give you another 10 seconds and we'll regroup. Some fantastic conversations happening around. Oh see, it's taking longer because you know each other now, <laughs> which is great. It sounds like you had a fantastic time talking about some of the things that are working. And I heard some superb examples. So. Braxton over there, don't worry, no one knows who you are, I do though. He was telling, he looks too young to have two kids and be married, but apparently he does lots of wonderful things outdoors with his family, plays with the kids and does some fun stuff, so really great to hear that. I heard another really neat example for another lovely lady over here who talked about some neat things she does on the way to school with her children, getting them to notice what's happening in the sky. So it was a really good example of take notice, and Braxton gave me a really good example of connect as well. And over here, we heard just a, such a neat idea around understanding the significance of making sure that we do connect, especially when we sometimes feel isolated with this issue. And I have to mention, I don't know what your name is, but this fantastic person, Vinny on Fortify. Working hard on Fortify, I was so impressed. And just saying he'd heard my webinar and was saying he's reaching out to the forum and working recovery, so really fantastic to hear that as well. <laughs> let's, not, let's not think about food right now. <laughs> Oh, all right, team, so a little bit more of the theoretical work. So I just want to tap into resiliency for a while. Now, you cannot talk about mental health and not discuss the resiliency framework. So in terms of resilience, what this is about is overcoming, and you'll see there in yellow, that's really important to know this, negative effects of risk exposure. So coping successfully with tra traumatic experiences and avoiding that negative trajectory. So for those of you that are working recovery hard, you'll know this space. The challenge it is to actually overcome when, it's, when you're struggling. And so resilience is required. Some of you may have gone to the Shame Resiliency Workshop, and that relates to this idea of we have to work through it. And what we've got to be able to do is be resilient despite the risks. So if we have a setback, we've got to bounce back. We've got to pick ourselves back up and do some work. If you're a spouse who's struggling, same thing. If you're stuck in tra trauma, feel it, heal it, move forward. We've got to tap into our tools. The self-care comes in so that we can support ourselves through those challenges. And that's around promoting the factors that can either help positive outcomes or reduce. The negative, the unpleasant thing will happen. How we choose to manage it is going to be the challenge. But again, if we're working our self-care and mental health, we're more likely to work through it. So resilience theory, I really like this. I'm, I'm a very passionate believer about strengths rather than deficit. And if we can tap into what we already have and do more of it, we're more likely to have success. So strength-based focus for resiliency theory works much, much better. And I know Clay Olson talks about this, working what works is more essential to help recovery. And that development is despite if you are exposed to risk. One of the ways you do that, so I talked about how do you teach these skills. So a big part of that is making sure that we tap into assets and resources. So what are assets? They're the positive things that we already have as individuals to cope. Believe it or not, you within yourself, every single person in here has skills that you already use when stressful things occur. So it could be because some of you might be parents. When you're dealing with your children, you actually use some skills to get through that. If you're, if you're on your own and you're working through some things through a job or work that you do, you actually have skills you already use. So what you've got to think is, I have a pool already of things I do. I now need to think, what are they and how can I use them when I am struggling? Or something occurs that I need to do that. One of the ways we need to do that is positive self-talk. And so uh, Kandao, a long time ago, used to use ants 
automatic negative thoughts, and I like to change them to pats, positive automatic thoughts. And so if we do that, we can manage through our assets. And that's a skill, to be able to change negative thoughts to positive thoughts, cognitive behavioural work. So what I want you to do is I want you to take a moment now and I want you to think of someone you know, could be you, doesn't have to be, or someone you know that has been either challenged by some sort of harmful pornography use. And I want you to think about and just discuss what are the assets they could utilise to mitigate the risks. What tools could they use? What assets could they tap into to help them through it? Some of you that are working through recovery will have some good thoughts on this as well. All right, go. All right, team, I'm just making my way back up to the front. So wrap up your conversation. Uh, I've got some really neat ideas from a few people to report back on. So, some fantastic conversations happening. I smiled because the first person I asked said, run. <laughs> and I thought, actually, it can work. So you're struggling you're finding it difficult. And I heard an example in the betrayal trauma session I went to this morning, and someone did that. They, they wanted to be in the fetal position, they were experiencing trauma, and they thought, actually, I'm going to feel this, but I'm going to run, and they ran six miles. For some, and we talked about that too, it's being in the bath and crying. It's an asset. That's saying, I know I can take my self-care look after myself and allow that pain to pass through, which is okay. I had some neat examples for a young, young man over there, don't know your name, didn't ask, but great ideas. He sees things like hiking and also being able to tap into things that give you a sense of purpose. They are all assets you can use to mitigate the risks. So some neat examples there. Thanks, team. Awesome. So the other part, so I've talked about your personal assets. What you also need to think about is resources, and we have a raft of them. So positive factors that you can use to overcome risk, and these are things that are external. So external things you can use to support yourself when issues come up. So there's some really good examples out there, and I know there's a number of you that help in this space. You are part of the support. So you are a resource. I've talked to some wonderful people who are in a helping role. And so things like getting support from your family, getting support from mentors. Some of you are the younger generation, so asking some adults to give you some help. There is some good community resources, the booths downstairs. So in Utah, you're fantastic. You have so many. So accessing community organisations. They all help to lift positive management, mental health and good self-care. So it's external resources that need to be changed. And when you use those good resources, that will, again, mitigate the negative outcomes. So that's what we're looking at. Now, just because of time, I'm going to not do the next activity. So I've got another one I'd really like to do with you. So just being conscious. So just to give you a wee bit of a summary of this section, I want to really emphasise that we need to have a challenge, not deficit mindset. And when we do that, it makes a huge difference. So a little bit of background. Traditionally with research, it was very biomedical. It focused on the pathology and problems. But when we're looking at a resilience framework and we're looking at challenge from this perspective, it actually enhances people's ability in terms of their strengths, their potential, the ability to bounce back. And I can tell you now, we all have that capability. And what I really like about this statement is despite hardship, but also honours our power, it helps us to know that we can actually have the skill set to protect ourselves. It's already inside you. But what we've got to think about is societal factors that impact that. So we've got to manage that as well. So resiliency is not just about an individual trait that you have. It's something that you develop through skills, through knowledge, through your own understanding, learning about yourself. So I thought I'm in America. I better at least quote one good American president. So this is how it looks. Enhance the protective factors and reduce the risk factors. That's what I'm trying to say in summary for those slides. And a beautiful quote from a fantastic president, do something. If it works, do more of it. 
If it doesn't, do something else. He was pretty smart, really. (laughs) So this is my main activity for you. So I've got a handout that I'd like you to look at. That's the side that has four empty boxes and a little bit of information for you to write in. So I'm just going to take that out while we do this part. Now, I've used a little bit more Māori language. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you say it this time. So this is based on a Māori model of health called Hawara in New Zealand that we use as a well-being framework, and I'm going to use it with you today. So we have tahatenana, which is physical well-being. So some of you shared wonderful examples of exercise and other things you do to manage your well-being in terms of your physical. So there's some ideas there for what that includes. Then we have tahenaro, which is mental and emotional well-being. This one is very, very important for me. I really, really make sure I work on this one as hard as I can because then it means I can be up here and be positive and happy with you and with all my students that I teach when I'm at the university in Christchurch. So a mental and emotional well-being is a big one for me. And that's around our thinking processes. And I've talked to you a bit about that today in terms of positive, negative thoughts, resiliency, mental health, and how we can respond. Key word up there, constructively. Then we've got taha So this, in simple terms, is social well-being. And that's basically all the connections we can have with others. And we looked at that through our Five Ways to Wellbeing work as well. So to me, there's been some good work coming out around the opposite of addiction is connection. Very important. So that's another area that you need to think about. And interesting, it's got some lovely words that tie into our keynote speaker around compassion. He talked a lot about forgiveness So lots of really important things that come into that area. And then we've got taha wairua. So many people here are from a faith, doesn't necessarily need to be, but spiritual well-being is around our values, our beliefs, and that is really essential, really useful in terms of our recovery, sense of purpose, sense of belonging, really like this word about self-awareness because that helps when we're thinking about our self-care and also making sure that we support ourselves both individually but within our community, so really significant. What I'd like you to do is, on your piece of paper, you've got a question at the top to look at. Just for time's sake, I have summarised it slightly, so I just want you to take a few minutes. Do this on your own. We've had lots of talking, so this is for you. You can take this away and add to it, You know, do some other things with it, share it with your friends and family, and build on it, because we'll make a start here, but this is for you to take away and use. And what I'd like you to think about is for someone you know who is challenged by it, could be you, but I want you to look at which of these areas is a personal strength. So you could do this for you on an individual level, or you can think of someone you know. It's entirely up to you. And then I want you to think about areas you'd like to focus on in the future. So we're going from a strength-based perspective. What's working and going well, and where to next? So do this on your own for a few minutes, and then if you're happy to share with someone near you, do that as well. I'll give you some time. Go for it. Right, team, apparently I've got roughly 10 to 15 minutes left. So, not quite, less? Okay, less. Oh, I better get going. So, this, this sheet of paper is for you to keep. You've hopefully made a start on it. The really nice thing of giving people a sheet that has boxes, when you walk around, you can see when the boxes get filled. So, some of you have done a really good job of acknowledging what's going on for you. So, take that away. Spend some time reflecting and thinking about it, whether you chose to do it for you or someone you know, and reflect on what was that like for you? So, nearly there. A couple of key things. One of the most important things that I think can really help enhance self-care is reframing. So that's when we have thoughts that we can use to help enhance our mental health. So what that means is the purpose of reframing is to arrive, and I like this word, authentic, helpful stories that does not eliminate the pain but enhances the strengths. So we have a choice. My colleague Vinny here used to talk to me about the house of misery. And he'd say to me, you have a choice. You can stay in the house of misery or you can do something about it. And I chose to do something about it, which is why I'm standing here in front of you. I could have, been, I could have stayed stuck in PTSD and trauma, but I thought, no, I'm going to allow this to make a difference to others. And our keynote speaker spoke a lot about that today too, and so pretty significant. So... 
just to finish off, we're almost there. I'm going to read this to you slowly so that you can take it in, but it really enhances the message I'm trying to get to you. If you're struggling, you deserve to make self-care a priority, whether that means lying in bed all day, eating comfort food, putting off homework, crying, sleeping, rescheduling plans, finding an escape through a good book, watching your favourite TV show, these days a lot of Netflix, or doing nothing at all. Give yourself permission to put your healing first. Quiet the voice telling you to do more and be more. Mums out there. And today, whatever you do, let it be enough. Feel your feelings, breathe, and be gentle with yourself. Acknowledge that you're doing the best you can to cope and survive. And trust that during this time of struggle, it's enough. One of my favourite quotes, I really like affirmations. <laughs> so just to finish off, this is my take-home message when adversity does come along, open up your self-care toolbox. So in front of you, on the other side of your sheet, and this is why I needed to acknowledge my spouse group, we had a session one day where I said to the ladies, right, let's brainstorm. What are all our self-care tools that we all use? And we brainstormed as many as we could. So I'm sharing that with you today to say there's a lot of them. What you've got to do is you are the expert on your mental health. You are the expert on your self-care. You know yourself better than anyone. So up to you to look at what's going to work for me. What can I use and continue to use? And like I said earlier, you already do a lot of these things. It's just reminding you to continue to do them so that we help to make sure we are well and we look after ourselves. That's me, folks. Any questions? I will answer most things. <laughs> oh, of course, Vinny's first. <laughs> That's a huge topic. I need another 55 minutes. <laughs> so Vinny's just asked me about risk exposure. So I'll, I'll talk about it from the lens of online pornography use. So if, it, if we're thinking about someone who struggles with unwanted behaviours, risk exposure can be simple things like having, having the laptop devices available too easily. So some of you probably put filters in place. So that's what we call a resource, managing a resource externally so that you manage that. So if you think about risk exposure and link it to resiliency, some of you probably do those day-to-day -day surface things to manage or mitigate the risks. So that's just a small example. If, ah, I was about to do spouse. So if it was a spouse, risk exposure could be, hmm, let me try and think of a good one, probably a trigger. And the trigger doesn't necessarily mean, it could be, so we often talk about a disclosure day. So that can be a risk. And we've, I had a, when I did my webinar this week for Fortify, I talked about an example where a risk ex exposure was the anniversary of a disclosure day. And because of that, they knew the struggle was coming along. And actually this particular spouse, and for those of you that are on the, heard the, the webinar, I know you did, I gave a really good example of how she reframed her thinking to make sure that that anniversary day wasn't going to be harmful anymore. So risk mitigation. So the risks are there. Again, we have a choice for what we do with them. So answer it. Any other questions? Mm-hmm. So courageous. Mm -hmm. My gosh, you're talking to someone that struggles to say no. <laughs> so I'm still learning that skill. And so the question was around saying it's not always easy to prioritise our self-care and because it affects social, it affects other people. And so some of the work we do in our spouse group, and it ties into boundaries. So setting healthy boundaries, and one, of that, one aspect of that is being able to say no and doing it without feeling guilty, 
because knowing that I need to say this, because if I don't, I am going to be struggling in the future. I find for our mums out there, so I think there's probably a few of you, learning to say no and also to prioritise your self-care is hard because you're looking after little ones. And so it's not an easy task. I do believe it takes practice. So with, And that's why I say self-care is a skill. It's learning to do that. And the answer to your question is it's an ongoing process. That's why we need to remind ourselves to continue to do it and learn how to prioritise and do what works for us, schedule-wise, work-wise. I think it does help to confide in people that you can trust to help with that, to support you when it's needed. So again, tapping into our assets and our resources to help us manage those challenges. Uh, great question. At the back there... Uh. Mm -hmm. mm, great, great point. Mm -hmm. Such a fantastic question. So to me, if we go back to your example of Netflix and getting, and what you're talking about is balance. And so the activity I gave you with the four boxes is actually alluding to balance. So with anything, if we do it in a compulsive way, it is going to be harmful. So that relates to making sure we manage things so that they don't get out of hand. So to me, if we go back to Netflix, if you are using Netflix to escape for a short period of time because you need to escape, because you just need a break, your brain's traumatised, you're struggling, and so you watch a movie, you relax, you distract yourself, but if you're doing it for the whole day, that's when you're struggling, and to me, that's when other self-care tools need to be put in place. So things like, okay, I need to catch myself here, I can't be doing Netflix all day, I better connect, I've got to reach out to a support group, or I've got to find other external help. So you can see how it's a skill that we've also got to be so self-aware so that it doesn't become self-sabotaging or self-harming and catching ourselves. So that example of the lady that ran, that was a really good example of that too. Catching yourself before it happens. Yeah, I hope that kind of answers it. Are we, are we good? <laughs> yes, absolutely. There we go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's all give a grand hand for Raisha's talk. Thank you.